Okay, this chapter is about gene technology, and so this is going to be a chapter that's kind of talking about genetic engineering and how when we get DNA at a crime scene, how we figure out whose DNA it is and that type of stuff. So um, if you think about it, if you're getting DNA from a crime scene, let's say, um, you don't want to lose it, right? Because that could be the only amount of DNA that you get from that crime scene. So what you're going to want to do is make copies of it as soon as possible. So there's a couple of ways of doing it, and the way we're going to start out with in the beginning of this chapter is one that takes a little bit longer, but it's been around a little bit longer. Um, so what you can do, and I think it's easier if you actually see the picture of this happening, is let's say that you have, um, so here you've got a bacteria, all right, and bacteria has their DNA, and then they have this thing called a plasmid, which is kind of like backup genes. And let's say that this is our cell from the crime scene, and we want to uh, make copies of this little piece of DNA. So what we can do is we can actually cut open the plasmid, and the way that we're going to do that, if you look at your notes, is going to be using something called a restriction endonuclease. Okay, so that's an enzyme. And what it's going to do is it's going to cut DNA into pieces. So that could be used in both parts. It could be used to cut out this little piece of DNA we're interested in and to cut the plasmid. So then the next thing that's going to happen is you see production of recombinant DNA. So what's going to happen is that little fragment of DNA that we're interested in copying, we're going to put that into the plasmid. And if you look here, that's what's happening right here, right? So we've got our little piece that's shown in black. We've got the plasmid shown in green. And we're going to just actually insert it into the plasmid, okay? So what's going to happen next is we're going to, and I think it's on the next slide, hopefully. Hello, next slide. Okay. Um, what's going to happen is we're going to have what's called a recombinant bacterium, which is going to be a bacteria that has that little extra piece of DNA in it. Then what we can do is the next part, whoops, there we go, stage three, which is going to be called cloning, and we're going to just basically um, expose the bacteria to an environment that it likes where it's going to start copying its DNA so it can um, split into new bacteria, and that's going to keep copying that little piece of DNA that we inserted into the plasmid. So basically, after a while, we'll have a bunch of copies of that DNA every time the bacterial cell makes a copy. And you know, bacterial cells can make copies of themselves pretty quickly. So let's say that we have a bunch of DNA pieces from that one cell that we got at the crime scene. So we would keep each fragment in a separate setup, right? Like a separate dish, a separate tube and everything. And then in that one tube, we've got tons of copies of that one little fragment. So the next thing is we have to do what's called screening. And if I go back to here, eh, no, it doesn't show it here. But anyway, um, what we can do at that point is we can actually expose the um, bacteria to like an antibiotic or something that's going to kill off everything else but our little pieces of DNA we're interested in. And then we've got our little library of these clones of the little pieces of DNA. So that's using bacteria to help that happen. Now, a much faster process is going to be what's called PCR, um, which is also called polymerase chain reaction as, as the long version. So let's think about what that word means. Polymerase, we learned about that before when we talked about how DNA copies itself, right? So that DNA polymerase's job was to make a complementary strand of DNA. So we've got polymerase, which is going to be an enzyme that's going to make DNA. Chain reaction means it's going to just keep going back and forth and back and forth and doing the same thing. So this is really nice because you can get billions of copies of DNA in a very short period of time. And we have this technology at CCD. We use it all the time. Um, so it's, a, it's getting a lot more common than it was when DNA technology first came out. So this is going to just be three main steps. And I think this is easier if you see the picture of it. Okay, here we go. So let's say we have our little target sequence of DNA, and what we want to do is make copies of it. So what we're going to do in a PCR experiment, this is so weird the way this is set up, um, the first step is called denaturation. So what we're going to do is we're going to heat the DNA up just to the point where the two strands separate from one another. And if you look in this picture, that's exactly what they're doing, right? They've separated from one another. So if we go back to your notes, that's that first step, 
denaturation. You're going to heat it to 98 degrees. That's going to cause that double helix to separate. Now, at this point, you're going to have um, a mixture that's going to be in there that's going to be um, primer, and then you're also going to eventually add polymerase, okay? So at this point, you have primer and single strands of DNA floating around. So the second phase is called annealing of the primers, and what's going to happen there is you're going to cool it down, and when you cool it down, what's going to happen is the primers are going to attach to the um, strands of DNA. That's a really good thing because the DNA strands might want to just go back together, right? But if you have these primers in the way, they're going to keep them from actually being able to come back together. Then the third stage is called primer extension. And if we look at your notes, what's going to happen is we're going to add something called TAC polymerase. And TAC polymerase is just a very heat-resistant form of polymerase. And what that's going to do is you're going to have that along with a bunch of A's, T's, G's, and C's, right? Nucleotides that have the four different um, nitrogenous bases on them. And then if you think about it, that polymerase has everything it needs to make a complementary strand of DNA. It's already got primer attached and it has the A's, T's, G's, and C's. So for primer extension, what's going to happen is it's going to um, attach to the primer and then it's going to make that new complementary strand of DNA. So after this process, you can see we have two new strands of DNA, right? Well, one old with one new, one old with one new, just like replication, right? Then what's going to happen is you're going to repeat this process over and over and over again. And as you can see, you're going to do it again and again and again, and you get thousands and billions and millions of copies over a very short period of time. So like the one that we have at school, I think the cycle that we do takes like about, I think it's eight hours or so. You can do it in like two to three hours, which is lovely. And it, it's a machine that basically heats it and cools it and heats it and cools it for the proper amounts of time. So it's really, really nice. So at the end of PCR, then you have tons of copies over a short period of time. Now, when you have all these pieces of DNA, what you can then do with them is something called RFLP. So we've got PCR and RFLP. So in the next one, we're going to get into what RFLP actually means.